today we have seven tiers to this classification and the biggest classification happens depending on whether it's a plant an animal a fungus or a bacteria that we are talking about the classification of the kingdom and this branch is more and more and then you have the layers of phylum class order family genus and finally species okay to understand the whole hierarchy of classification let's take an example of my pet dog gucci so if gucci is not a branded name enough for you i'll give you a better one cordate mammalian carnivora canidae canis familiaris what what did i say did you understand that let me just say that once more cordate mammalian carnivora canidae canis familiaris so all dogs get into a common group called species so the big question arises how can you say the two individuals belong to the same species the answer is simple two members are said to be of the same species if they can interbreed and produce fertile offspring the fertile offspring part is important underline it because a lion and a tiger can get together and have a baby liger but the liger would not be able to produce baby ligers and so the conclusion is that lions and tigers are of different species now coming back to dogs since two dogs of any breed can interbreed to produce fertile offspring dogs come under the same species called familiaris it is believed that wolves and jackals were domesticated by early humans which in turn led to the evolution of dogs and wolves belong to the species lupus jackals to the species aureus we group all three of them into the same genus called canis so dogs are biologically called canis familiaris wolves are called canis lupus and jackals are called canis aureus genera that have some common characteristics are placed in one family so the canis group which is dogs wolves and jackals and that of the foxes which have comparatively smaller size and flatter heads called vulpes are placed in one family called canidae families share some common characteristics in this case it's the pointed snout and they all kind of you know actually look the same they are related although a bit more distantly as compared to the individual genera and the species families that can be grouped together get into the same order the cats join the dogs at this level bring in the bears too and you have an order called carnivora which is named after the carnivores or meat eating animals similar orders are placed into the same class bats rats whales primates carnivores all get into the class of mammalia the mammals and mammals are just one kind of animals with a backbone that you would actually find lying around on earth others that you find with a backbone are frogs lizards birds which are a part of classes amphibia reptilia and avis respectively as i mentioned these are guys with a backbone and so they are called chordates and chordata is a type of phylum that houses all chordates the mollusks arthropods and lids sponges and jellyfish fall into different phyla but all of them come together form the kingdom of animals kingdom animalia and now that these steps are clear to you let's answer a very important question how do you know that you are human so let's list out the characteristics and as we list down these characteristics let's do something really interesting we we'll start at the bottom of the pyramid and build it up so let's understand why you are human you are multicellular heterotrophic motile and you lack a cell wall this is a characteristic of most members of the kingdom animalia you have a digestive tract and some organ systems because of which you fall into a sub kingdom called eumetazoa you have a notochord a dorsal hollow brain and a nerve cord throughout life because of that you fall into the phylum chordata since you have a vertebral column segmented that it is 
around the spinal cord and a cranium around your brain, you belong to a subphylum called craniata or vertebrata. The division at the phylum level does not stop here. You have a mouth supported by jaws because of which you fall into a section called nathostomata. Because of mammary glands, hair and pinnae, humans fall into the class of mammalia. And since you have four pentadactyl limbs, you fall into a superclass called tetrapoda. And because babies are born alive and are fed on their mother's milk, humans fall into a subclass called theria. Nails over the digits, acute vision and a pathetic sense of smell puts us into the order of primates. And since we have facial muscles that make us smile or cry and a rounded head, we fall into a suborder called Anthropodia. Your arms are shorter than your legs. You have an erect posture, a flat face, a bipedal gait, a binocular color vision. And all these amazing features mean that you are a part of a family called Hominidae. The very big brain that you have, the gift of speech that you are born with, and long childhood so that you can play, play and play, put you into a genus called Homo. And finally, a high forehead, a prominent chin, reduced body hair is the topping on the cake that puts you into the topmost group of this pyramid, which houses the species called Homo sapiens. And this is the classification of you, why you are you and what makes you human. So just to summarize the whole hierarchy of life, you start with species, the lowest category in the basic taxonomic hierarchy and has the common characteristics with other species under the same genus. Like dogs are similar to their cousin wolves, similar enough to be in the same genus but different enough to be in different species. The genus is an aggregate of a group of closely related species, like the genus Canis, which houses the species of dogs and wolves, or the genus Felis, which houses the species of jungle cats and wild cats and domestic cats. The family comes in next. It's the group of closely related genera with less common characteristics than the species or the genus rank. The cats and the dogs belong to the Felidae and Canidae family respectively and this is actually where the cat fights start. To bring things into order, you group similar families into one group called the order. Maybe what they eat is what puts them into a similar order. For example, the order Carnivora which are the most diverse in size of any mammalian order, ranging from the least weasel, just as little as 25 grams and 11 centimeters, to the polar bear, which can weigh up 1,000 kgs, to the southern elephant seal, whose adult males weigh up to 5,000 kgs and measure up to 6.9 meters in length. A group of related orders form a class and mammals from a class called Mammalia and fishes from a class called Pisces. Similar classes get into a common phylum in animals and in plants. We use the word division instead of phylum. So since we are almost at the bottom of this big pyramid, at this point, different phyla will share very few characteristics with other phyla. Phylum that you know really well are Chordata, Annelida, Arthropoda, Mollusca, Protozoa, Porifera, Coelentrata, Echinodermata. Few so many, right? And then you reach the broadest category in the system of classification called the kingdom. Like animals and plants are two different kingdoms, so are bacteria and fungi. The kingdoms that we know today, Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plantae and Animalia cover the spectrum of the beautiful world that we live in. The whole hierarchy of life shows us how related we are to each other, although distantly.